feel like this is the part of Haiti. It's part of me. My mom told me that when she was young, she used to stay on the shore and then see sharks. But now, I go up without seeing them swimming. And I want my son or my daughter to see them when they're swimming. Because I'm not thinking about like only the present. I need to be part of the future too. The first trip to Haiti, I fell in love with it. The, the first time I put my foot in the sand on the beach, I said, there's something about this place. When I think of Haiti, the words that come to my mind are beautiful, diverse, interesting. They are completely connected to the ocean. One of the things that we realized is that it's urgent that we do what we can to save the sharks from being extinct in our waters, which could easily happen down the road. If we're killing 30 to 40 juvenile oceanic white tips in two little small fishing villages in the entire country, is pretty significant. But these fishermen are hungry, they're trying to feed their families and kids, so without even having an incentive or a reason to keep sharks alive and safely release them, of course they're gonna kill them and eat them. Je suis respecté la mer et la dame manger, la dame faire tout ça. Et c'est comme mourir pour me quitter la mer. Et la dame vivre, je suis même connu. This is the part of us. And when something is part of you, you need to respect it and then protect it. We teach the fishermen about the sea and then teach them they can make money all the way, not by killing sharks. Because if it's here, it's for a reason. Everything God gives us, it's for a reason. We need to protect them. No fisherman is going to be incentivized to do something unless they understand why. And so the idea was to get them a smartphone that was cost effective and they could use twofold to make phone calls. They could take pictures, they could go on, on, a, on an app like WhatsApp, send us the photos and positively ID. So what the photos have done is it opened up the potential for uh, Dr. Mark Bond at FIU and OceanX and the MV Alusha to be able to come because they had uh, photographic evidence, they had real samples. Having worked alongside Jamie and her organization for over a year now, there's been multiple attempts for myself to get down to Haiti and to meet with the fishing communities, to pick their brains and get their local knowledge, because none of this would be possible without collaboration with the fishing communities. The tracking data that we get from the various tags is really helpful because it shows how we can explain and, and get a better handle on where these species and individuals are moving. When they tagged the first shot, I was here, but I was taking pictures, but I was still watching them. Nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then I was watching, watching, watching. And then I feel like I can do it. In my mind, I say, okay, yes, I can do it. My second experience with sharks, it was yesterday. I take the tail off and then I see if, if it was a female or a male. Because I, I, I know when I put it on the, on the boat, I won't have time to see that because I have to go really quick. I take the DNA, I put the hook off, and then I release it. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> None of this would be possible without collaboration with the fishing communities. None of us want to see people's livelihoods stripped away from them, but what we want to do is let them know and create that awareness that they have a unique resource that they would want to protect and can help us long-term protecting them and getting more tags out. 
I think that the key to success in all of this has to come from locals that get it. You know, they're from the same country, they speak the same language. It's the hope of what we can accomplish that I wake up the next day and say, you know what, today's a new day. Trying to be the first one who protect sharks, who protect turtles, and maybe another one will see you and then will do the same as you. Because one, you are not strong, but all together we are strong.